while we're on this topic, though, could we drill down to a, another level, which is uh, that tension with its eternal, as far as I can see, between thinking long term and thinking about quick wins, getting that buy in that we talked about earlier, but also saying, oh, we need to build a platform for the future, not just for today and tomorrow and maybe this quarter if we're on the financial markets. Adam, you're at the heart of a lot of cloud transformation projects with many clients at Rackspace. Maybe you could talk about how you balance that uh, equation. I don't think, uh, based on the clients and the customers that I work with, I don't think there's one single answer. But um, I think it's more and more important to raise the question that says, uh, what are you, if, con if transformation is continuous, regardless of its type, right? The idea that, uh, you know, all of, if technology is enabling transformation and technology is changing faster and faster year on year, the opportunities for transformation are coming thicker and faster and the pressure down, both from the market, but from internal stakeholders is becoming greater and greater. So the, the bit that I think that, that I see with my clients and customers that they're genuinely still trying to solve for, I don't think anyone's got the perfect, perfect answer is, how do I actually carve out or buy the right to invest in getting better at transformation? And you know, I'd be really interested to hear from, from the group here about what they're doing to you know, make the next project better than the last or the last set of benefits realized faster or, or uh, you know, to a higher quality than the last. Because I, I don't think anyone solved it yet and I think all we can do is really talk about and share that experience at this point in time. If I can pick up on that. So um, when we tackle projects at, at Pure Gym, we um, utilize the best elements of Agile. Uh, and one of the things we do is every two weeks we hold a retrospective. Um, and I don't think it, it has to necessarily apply to where you're doing Kanban or two weekly sprints, but it can actually work for big transformation projects as well. So every two weeks, what we would do is effectively get together as a group, um, identify the things that worked well over the last two weeks and the things that we um, could have improved upon. And we've got this mantra where we say that um, we've done the best of our ability with the tools that we've got. So there's no blame game here. It's all about sort of improvement as we go. We identify those things and then everyone gets the, the opportunity to vote on the things that they think are most important. And they identify the things that they've actually got control over as well. So it's all very well to say that um, something that's actually without or outside of their remit, um, those things are really hard to control. But if there's something actually within the team that we could change to make things better, if it's efficiency, if it's changing the order in which we do things, it means that we can be more focused on getting that benefit. Um, and I think that if you have that opportunity to do that and to look back, you're not only um, improving how you might do a transformation project in the future, you're actually improving the way in which you implement that transformation project you're currently on. And I think that has made a big difference to the way in which we structure things. And it's moving away from that whole Prince to methodology, let's get all of the requirements set up and done early doors before we actually start working on something. It means that you can crack on with that particular project and the point you're, you're making there where, when, how do you seek the best business benefit? The idea would be to effectively take the business goals, start with those, how do you achieve those as early on in the project as possible and consider doing things like minimal viable products, yeah. quick wins, low-hanging fruit, to try to get those business benefits much earlier on. So you're trying to weigh up the two and do both in parallel effectively? If you can, yeah, absolutely. And I think it is possible. I think adding to that, because the, the continuous feedback and the retrospective are really, really critical mm -hmm. in terms of uh, learning. I uh, uh, totally, totally agree. I think, though, also the continuous measurement and uh, it's, uh, it's continuous measurement, I, 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 I say, across three, three, sort of, three sort of pillars. Because, uh, you know, the prioritization around what happens into a transformation is, can be very subjective and maybe a bit biased also into what is important and how do we know that what is important is really important, not only through measurement and actually seeing what the data is telling you and not what you want the data to tell you is really important to enable you to pivot or persevere in terms. And 
that's really a change in, in relation to by uh, moving through this uh, continuous cycle and, uh, of, of change is you will uh, come to crossroads and those crossroads really is the data is going to help you. So continuous measurement around value and also understanding uh, the, 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 the bottlenecks that you are encountering. So continuing, continual measurement of flow is really important in terms of what's going through that cycle uh, and what's coming out in terms of have you built it right. I think the thing I find with transformation is um, you tend to run so many projects through the process you can't necessarily isolate which one is having the biggest impact and so you have to take a more holistic look at the measurements and and think about you know the, the trends are they heading in the right direction because in isolation you know a lot of us would struggle with you know attribution in marketing where did the lead come from it doesn't really matter as long as we're getting more leads and the leads are converting better than they used to that's the that's the business goal where did they come from well you know you may never a be able to pin that down so it's an overall effect that you're trying to have with transformation and so you do have to focus on measurement you do have to think about trends because again some of those measurements are actually leading indicators so they're not necessarily turning into financial benefit in in a, in a time frame that equates to a quick win so the company i work for you know we, we can have sales cycles that are five years long so how can i justify investing in digital marketing and say and here's the return on that investment I can only do it by looking at leading indicators, right? Am I getting more sales qualified leads? Are the sales qualified leads that I'm getting moving through the pipeline faster? Because that's, that's the only leading metrics that I can look at. Was it this form of digital marketing or social media or that? You know, we're trying to do all of it because we're coming from a traditional marketing you know, organization to a digital marketing organization. We're gonna do it all. Right? And, and what we need to see is that the macro measures are moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm.